Blessed be your holy name. Glorify your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Chapter has give him praise. Hallelujah. meant to understand that there are some um, praise reports in the house but well, we are going to praise God we thank God for them every every praise report we give God praise for them well we're going to move the praise reports to next week Sunday praise God can you put it down background just background background there good background down okay good amen so we're going to have it uh, next week Sunday. I just want to jump right into what um, we couldn't finish last week Sunday. Are you happy with that? You're not excited this morning. Amen. Last week Sunday I started up... Um, to delve into something very, very um, lovely, a revelational aspect of partnering with God. Now, when you have the opportunity to partner with God, it is something lovely and something great. God has always called us to partner with him. And it is honorable, I must confess to you, to partner with God. The ability, when we find ourselves partnering with God, it gives us, um, puts us ahead. Amen. Please, uh, sound engineer, turn this to stage mics down a little bit just the stage mics so speakers rather stage speaker just turn them down a little bit hallelujah that's nice good uh, I hate echoing my ears so when you have that opportunity to partner with God it is lovely in the book of Genesis when God created man, before that creation, he made everything available before he made man. Now, one of the marvelous questions you would ask yourself is this. Does the creator not have the ability to maintain what he has created? Does God that created the firmaments the skies and sustain them without a pillar does that God not have the ability to maintain everything he has created there are many questions that we ask but you see that is where partnership comes into play God said to Adam he said take care of the garden dress it and what keep it our God is a God that will always want to bring us into partnership with him the problem with the church today is that we have many folks that enjoy going solo amen we have many folks that enjoys entering into the realm of I want to go solo I want to do things by myself and when we enter into that dimension that's where we start making errors and making a whole lot of mistakes if God 
does not have his way in your life there is no way he can guide you in your life should I say that again if God cannot have his way or you can you, you don't want to give God that open door into your life he cannot guide what he cannot have his way remember when God created man he gave man one strong ability and that is the willpower ability to decide what he wants to do at every given time without any supernatural interference the earth is where it is today because man decided to keep it in this shape for in the beginning it was not so Praise God. In Haggai chapter 1 verse 3 to 11. Haggai 1 verse 3 to 11. Let's look at that scripture from the Amplified Translation. And I want us to focus this morning, this, this afternoon. And pay a very strong attention because I'm going to be saying things that are very strong. In Haggai chapter 1 verse 3 says, Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to live in your expensive what? Come on, talk to me. Are you, are you with me this, this day? Good. It is is it time for you to live in your expensive panel what have you seen have you seen the latest kind of houses today that they build it like it's a brick a panel like fix it very well do you know when god started speaking about this hundreds of years ago today we are experiencing panel houses have respect for god and fear god now he said why this house of the lord lies in ruins go ahead verse 5 now therefore thus said the lord of hosts consider your ways and thoughtfully reflect on your conduct how you carry yourself your priorities verse 6 he said, you have planted much, but you have vested little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you do not have enough to be intoxicated. Now, that word intoxicated, there does not mean that you start taking alcohol and start getting drunk. That word means that you drink, but you are not filled, you are not satisfied. Praise God. He said, you, ha you have clothed yourselves, but no one is warm enough. Now, this talks about people being unsatisfied. People being unfulfilled. Have you seen people that they have, when you look at them, they seem to have everything life can offer. But they, ha they have no peace. Yet they are not satisfied. See, you earn wages. Earn them just to put them in what? In a bag with what? Holes in it. Because God has withheld his blessings. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways and thoughtfully reflect on your conduct again. Go ahead. Verse 8. He said, go up to the hill country, bring what? Lumber and rebuild my house in bracket temple, that I may be pleased with it and be glorified, says the Lord. Accepting, accepting is as done for my glory. Verse 9. He said, you look for much, 
in bracket harvest but it comes to little and even when you bring that home who blows it up are you reading with me who blows it off god say i blow it away you bring forth good fortunes into your house god blows it away scatter it around he said why says the lord of hosts because of my house which lies in ruins why each of you go ahead each of you runs to his own house eager to enjoy it you know after the service after church service everybody's rushing back home wow the way my house is neat i want to go enjoy and cross my leg and take take me some some coffee and i'll watch some nice movies hallelujah every great thing you want to start and experience you have to start with your desire seeking after god can i hear you say i will seek after the lord the bible says seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and they say every other thing shall be added unto it but today we seek after every other thing and seek god last after today's ministration i see your mind and your and your and your and your heart being changed in the name of jesus i want to take you through another scripture first corinthians chapter 3 we're going to be doing a whole lot of readings today because i want you to see things from the eyes of the scriptures praise god first corinthians chapter 3 from verse 6 to 9 first corinthians 3 6 to 9 are you there if you're there say amen say i planted apollos watered but god put it back to king james please except i tell you don't change the scriptures just put it back to king james now he said i have planted apollos watered but god gave the increase are you seeing the partnership there so then neither is he that planted anything neither he that watereth but god that giveth what the increase but god that giveth what but somebody needs to go and plant somebody needs to water somebody needs to water the plant somebody has already planted the, the flower some other person needs to water it but god is the one that gives the increase partnership with god makes you very relevant to the kingdom pastor are you saying there are people that are irrelevant yes to the body of christ when you become an asset that is when when you are not in church everybody misses you then you know that your effect in the kingdom is very strong there are people that die and go nobody bothers themselves about them they just mourn them and they go their way but there are kingdom people that when god called them home the church cries because they know they are missing something heavy It is not a good one that when you are not in in the house everybody rejoices but immediately you come back everybody get angry that tells you that you are not partnering with the spirit of your home something is wrong with you somewhere praise god he said now he that planted and he that watered are one we are one we are what we are what we are one in the lord and every man shall what receive his what his own reward according to his own labor there are many of us that labor in different aspects in the church in the kingdom in general question you ask yourself brother sister are you a laborer in the kingdom 
or a hinderer in the kingdom are you partnering with god in furtherance of the kingdom or you are partnering with the devil to hinder the kingdom hallelujah verse 9 he said for we are laborers together with god my god i love this we are what we are what we are laborers together with so god also is a laborer <laughs> hallelujah god also is a laborer it simply means that as the lord is laboring we are also laboring with him in the kingdom you are walking i am walking we are putting our hands together we are laboring we are putting our efforts together so then the increase comments why because we are laboring co-laborers in his vineyard he said yeah are god's husbandry you, you see that Ye are God's building. Can I hear you say this word say from today? I yield myself. I yield my spirit to the Lord. I yield everything that concerns me to my Lord Jesus Christ. Go down to verse 12. Let me show us something. Go down to verse 12, down to 15. Verse number 12, down to 15. Praise God. Verse number 12, down to 15. Verse 12, the same scripture. Verse 12. Hallelujah. Verse number 12. Not chapter 12, verse number 12. Praise God. He said, now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, go ahead. Verse 30. He said, every man's work shall be what? Shall be made manifest. You know what that means? It means that your works shall be revealed. What am I doing now? I'm preaching. And what's the purpose? The purpose is to further the kingdom. Is to build the body of Christ. And those that have not come unto Christ to be able to come to Christ. The works that we do, they are made what? Manifest. Meaning, by their fruits, you shall know them who you are is based on the fruits you produce you know a tree by the way the fruits look like am i communicating with somebody it is impossible for a mango tree to start growing orange am i communicating with somebody it is never never possible whenever you see that something has altered something but it can't be so we are made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is you know there are many works when you give is works when you preach is works when you guide people his works when you when you lead somebody into a place of testimony his works now the question is what's the motive behind what you're doing are you in church as cover up are you doing what you're doing because you want people to recognize you do you want to be up here because you want your friends 
and those that say you will never amount to anything to see you is that the reason the money you are asking god to bless you with why do you need the money have you ever asked yourself the question if the reason is to oh lord i want to buy gucci i want to be able to buy ferrari car i want to buy a mansion you know when you give opportunity for people to talk you will really understand where their heart is sometimes i i throw i throw those questions to some persons i just say hey come on if god blesses you now with one careless hundred million dollars what would you do first do you know that many times people rush say hey me ah pastor i will buy myself a house because to people in this part of the world buying a house is the greatest achievement it's not like you're even buying the house outright it's like rent too i'm living in a rented house you are living in a rented house it's not like the house is now your own you own it with the bank the person that gave you the money has right more than you in that house so quit this pride that steps into your spirit i own a house now Ta! you don't own anything it's not your own you're living on a borrowed apartment the day the owner wakes up in the morning and says, I don't like your face anymore, you'll be gone. It's just like landlord telling you that. Anyway, I accept you here. I don't want you here anymore. You'll be gone. So reality, you own nothing. Humble yourself. Because I've looked at people from this part of the world. They, there is nothing they aspire for. Or that than, ha, want to buy a house so the reason why you kill yourself in the snow the reason why you are working hard is because i just want to buy a house okay now you have the house are you still free is it not the same thing as when you pay your rent in the former house is it not the same thing that you apply in fact even now you're spending more because you're building your building agency are not responsible to clear your snow you will be the one to clear your snow you will walk your lawn you will spend money do you know how much it is to to pay for utilities for a, a detached four bedroom house aha uh -huh. Some people that have tested it, you are hearing from the congregation. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, you know. Me can't lie to you, you know. It is real. So when you have this whole understanding, don't be fast to declare, I have arrived. Because your journey has just begun. When God gives you a thing, he pays his debt. God does not owe no man. He said, no, owe no man nothing, save what? Love. Don't owe any man anything. Don't be indebted to any man. The only thing you owe your neighbors is to love them. The Bible says, love your neighbor even as you have loved yourself. So if your struggle based on that one alone, it simply means that you don't even love yourself. So when you talk about partnership with God, you talk about your works, what you do, how you do them, why you do them. Some people go into preaching or being a pastor for different reasons 
Yeah. The book of Jeremiah made it so clear that the reason why God called the shepherds is to feed the sheep. But you have shepherds that milk the sheep, starve the sheep, still be pressing a dry breast of the sheep to extract milk out of it. You can't extract nothing because the sheep is not feeding. Hallelujah. Somebody say truth. You know, there is no truth to the truth test. Truth is truth. There is no good truth and bad truth. So, when you look at this scripture, verse number 14 says, If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Now, after your works have been tried with fire, go back to 14. After your work has been tried with fire, the reason why your works may be burnt and you have nothing, it doesn't matter how big it appears. Have you ever experienced having a basket filled with feathers? Does it have weight? Somebody may have a padlock key and that padlock key weighs more than a feather of mighty basket. And when you throw that little padlock key into the fire, the fire will hit it. But it will still remain. You know why? Because the works is real. It's not fake. But when somebody that says, oh, you know, I'm the one that does this for the church. I, I, I do this for the church. I am everywhere. About everywhere, yet you are nowhere. About all businesses, yet you have no business with heaven. Our works will be tried with fire. So you know. And that does not mean that you will make heaven. You can make heaven, but you, you, the crown of your, of your brother or sister will not be the same as yours. When Jesus said, my father's house, there are many mansions. There are different kinds of mansions. So. I tell people, I say, many will make heaven. Not a few. Many will make heaven. If you have confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you will make heaven. But the main deal amongst believers that made heaven is your works. God will question you, the gift he put inside of you. All this while, what have you been using it for? I gave you the gift of singing. What did you use it for? Instead of using it very well, you use it to oppress your church. Hold the pastor captive. The day pastor say the one that you don't like, you say, I'm not singing again. You know what you're doing? You're holding the church captive. As an instrumentalist, a bass guitarist, you're a drummer, you're a keyboardist. And because somebody made you angry in your department, you say, you know what? You guys won't see me again for two weeks. I'll, I'm taking a break for two weeks. You see those kind of people? They were not originally there to serve God. They were there for the fame, for the praises. Watch those that are not in for the outcome. There are those that you are praising them. Immediately you just stop singing their praises. Their fire dies down. What energizes their fire is your praise to them. The more you praise them, you fan the fire. The day you say, oh, my mouth is spreading me, let me stop. They will look at you. Say, this man no longer takes me serious. That's why my kind of pastor, you know, I say it to us, I say, <laughs> Nobody can hold me and this work God has asked me to do captive. Amen. If you say you're not singing, I'll go up there. I sing very well. I sing. I have, I have a mother to play the keyboard for me. I will worship God and you'll be surprised. 
God will, it is not the instrument that makes the presence of God to come down. No. No. Don't, don't get it twisted. It is not the keyboard. It is the individual and their spirits that brings down the atmosphere. Praise God. Yesterday you saw the lady that just worshipped. Just her presence alone. Stir my anointing. That's how it works. Just handling the mic and sing a common song, every one of us knew. It sounded like a different tune in your ears. That is when the spirit has taken over the soul of the person. You cannot be a worshiper and you don't worship yourself. You don't force people and say, you will open your mouth. There was a church I used to go to sometime when I came into Canada New York. There is this young man that sings praise and worships sometimes. When he's singing, he, he, he forces the congregation. Sing. And when the congregation, I watch his attitude. When the congregation is not responsive, he gets angry. That's no longer a worshiper. That's a superstar. Like... His place is in Hollywood. Those individuals are not partnering with God because their motive of going in for it is not of God. When you give your brother something, why do you give that thing to that person? Is it because you want to tell, show to that person that you are bigger than that person? Yeah, let me tell you. The Bible says that the less is blessed than the better. You are giving does not mean that you give to somebody doesn't mean that you are better than that person. You are only privileged. <laughs> I use the word privilege because if, if you have your money and everybody say we will not take from you. Eat your money yourself. You will get tired. Oh, praise God. You don't know that a rich man can be isolated. You see the way they isolate people in COVID-19. You have your money. Nobody wants to work in your company. You say, come, I will pay you $400 per hour. Thank you, sir. Then you will not know what isolation means. Even though you are the biggest of all, humble yourself. Do you know that money, God does not give people money. God doesn't give anybody money. God does not give wealth. I know your eyes are budging out now. But before you stone me, wait, let me land. God entrusts wealth into your hands. He doesn't give it to you. Somebody say entrust. Somebody say entrust. God entrusts even the gifts you have. God entrusts it into your hands. Jesus gave a parable about a master that was traveling and he called his servants and gave them some talents. He entrusted it into their hands. And how you go about it determines how and who you truly are. If any man's work abide which he hath built, which he, not God, has built. You have to build your works. If any man's work, by which he has built, thereupon he shall receive a reward. Verse 15. Verse 15. If any man's work shall be burned, you see that? He shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. See why I say you will still make heaven. But how will I go to heaven? And when everybody is moving around with golden crown, I'm being made to walk around with silver. How, how can you be poor on earth and go to heaven? You are still, is poverty your, your middle name? Praise God. To be poor is not a sin. Jesus said the poor you will have amongst you always. So you cannot pray poverty out. But the prescription to get out of poverty is the word of God. 
he said they got to the poor the gospel is preached am i communicating with somebody but the fact remains that would you be poor here on earth are you lazarus the poverty of lazarus here on earth could not change his mentality even when he died he kept he went to heaven and had to beg to squat with abraham may that never be your portion now the case of lazarus and abraham's bosom is real some you see that that scripture it is real don't joke with it it's not just some kind of a myth no it is real because lazarus lived all his life as a believer waiting for the crumbs that will fall from the master's table why not get out of the table go into the city look for something to do and bless the life of others i have learned something over the years that no matter how poor you think you are you still have something to offer to somebody no matter how you say i don't have there's something inside of you because you can offer encouragement you can offer hope to people you can restore people from hopelessness to a hopeful future just men sharing with them the gospel of jesus christ he was there and even dog the bible say the dog comes to lick his wound so the only thing he could offer is to give his wound to a dog to lick no wonder when he got to heaven they showed him bosom of abraham you know what bosom is it's like you have a big house and you have a touch house behind the big mansion so go and stay there it's a borrowed one till this day so don't think it that your what you're doing here ends here it doesn't end it's accounted for you and i on that day when the master will call you and me to say come and give account my brother my sister what will you say you have been born again for 37 years hello you have not won one mosquito to church and say this is my convert haven't you read the bible says, he that winneth a soul is wise so what partnership are you partnering with the kingdom nothing many years ago i made a pledge to myself i said i will never be a bench warmer in the church even though i'm not a direct worker i'm just a regular member i i will i will i will by myself make a very strong effect asking the pastor what would you like me to what can i do just to make my relevance to show forth in the kingdom there are many things you can do you must not literally be a worker in the church to be effective in the kingdom are you aware when the prophet came to bless the woman the woman was complaining he said what do you have in your house but i said i don't have anything no 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 what do you have in your house i have a little pot of oil he said see that oil go and borrow vessels god will never use what you don't have to bless you he blesses you with what you have when he was encountering moses god never brought rod from heaven and gave to moses he asked Moses, what do you have in your hand? Moses said, it's just a rod. He said, cast it down. Moses casted it. The rod turned into serpent. Moses wanted to run. God said, come back. He said, pick that viper. Moses said, no. God said, pick it by the tail. You see that? Instruction. And the Bible said, he picked the snake by the tail and it turned back into the rod. That was the rod that opened the Red Sea. All this while, Moses has had a rod. He never knew that that rod can tear the Red Sea open. He never knew that that rod can cause so much a great of a change. Ask yourself, what do you have to offer? Salvation is free. But can I tell you, you still need to buy your Bible yourself. Are you there? He said, if any man's work shall be bound, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by what? Fire. Let me run. 
ways to partner with God ways to partner with God if I want to partner with God so what are the ways I can partner with God number one you can partner with God by giving to the needy somebody say the needy Matthew 25 verse 31 to 46 you can partner with God by giving to the needy Matthew 25 31 to 46 you can partner with God by making sure that the needy in your community they have something and you must not be Bill Gates as rich as Bill Gates before you not decide that you can you can you can help out with the little you have a drop of water from here and there can cause an ocean am I communicating with somebody for I was hungered and yet and ye gave me meat I was thirsty and ye gave me what drink I was a stranger and ye took me in go ahead Right. naked and ye clothed me i was sick and ye visited me i was in prison and ye came unto me you came to visit me go ahead move 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 verse 37 hallelujah then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? Verse 38. When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Verse 39. Are you seeing that? Good. Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? Go ahead verse 40 and the king shall answer and say unto them verily i say unto you in as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of this my brethren who is the person that jesus is talking about the next person next to you and those in your neighborhood and those in your community so in as much as you have done to the least Of this, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Verse 41. Then shall he say unto, on, unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Prepare for who? For the devil and his angels. Verse 42. For I was hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me no drink now let me tell you every good deed you do you think you do it to the individual you do it to jesus himself this is no time for playing righteousness or religion it doesn't matter if the individual appreciate it or not that's none of your business you are partnering with God to feed those that don't have food. You are partnering with God to, to, to go visit the sick in the hospital. You are partnering with God to clothe people that don't have clothes. How can you be eating, have food in the house, and the next door neighbor? The baby is crying and you know that they have no food and you finish eating you gather your children say let us thank the lord and go to bed what a believer what kind of a heart you have money with you and a brother came in and say oh i am having challenges can you help me and you lied to that brother and said even me i have bigger challenge than you do you know it's a sin when somebody is hungry and comes to you for food and you have food to offer instead of you to offer food you start offering prayers the person don't need your prayers they need to do what to eat give them food 
and you start offering prayers may the lord provide for you no god bless you so you will be able to provide for that individual You have connections that could bless the lives of people. Why do you withhold the blessings of people? God told Abraham, he said, I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. There is no blessing that is meant for you and your family alone. The Bible said, anyone that withhold the corn from the people, he said, the, the people shall curse that individual and that curse will come to pass. Do, you're asking God for riches. Don't you know that being rich is a responsibility? Have you asked yourself a question? Can I take care of my community? Can I take care of the needy? Can I provide for people around me? Because you're asking God to give you what he could give to the whole community. And shall God, you're asking God to give it to you alone. Okay, God has made you the distributor. Can you distribute? Are you with me read that scripture down when you get back home from verse 31 to 46 praise god number two ways to partner with god how can i partner with god pastor i've heard what you said now i want to partner with god how can i partner with god number two by spreading the gospel of jesus christ john john 21 verse 15 by spreading the words by spreading the word the gospel of jesus christ so when they had dined jesus said to simon peter simon son of jonah lovest thou me more than this he said unto him yea lord thou knowest that i love thee he said unto him feed my what feed my lambs praise god feed my lambs if you confess that you love god so much let one week not go without you evangelizing somebody you don't need everything oh pastor should tell us so we go hello when you are asking god for blessing do you tell god to go and take permission from pastor go in the community you see people around you have the refugee areas you can print a track with your own money invest in the kingdom print a track get information from the church print a track and go out yourself and keep sharing you don't need the church to be behind you you have god behind you talk to somebody if you carry that as an assignment to yourself you it's none of your business if they respond or not. You're doing the work. The, the, the challenge, what the devil uses to scare some of us is that, oh, pastor, you see, when I go out, they won't listen. Is it your business? It is the Holy Spirit that convicts the hearts of men, not you. Your business is to go there and stand and say what the Lord wants you to say. You go your way. Is there anybody here that was flogged into this church like they told you you have to come and visit us and somebody was whooping you that you must come the holy spirit convicted your heart and spoke to you say this is the real deal and you bought into it now you're seeing yourself prospering that is how you should speak to others also hallelujah number number three and the last number three are you there by giving towards the work of god by giving towards the work of god john chapter 6 verse 5 to 13 by giving towards the work of god in john chapter 6 from 5 to 13 we see a story of a little boy that borrowed Jesus his bread and his fish somebody say borrowed he partnered with God by just giving bread and when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him 
he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? Praise God. Verse 6. And this he said to prove him, for himself knew what he would do. Jesus already knew what the end game is going to be like. I'm going somewhere. Follow me. Verse number 6, 7. Philip answered him, 200 penny watts of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little verse 8 everybody read this part verse 8 want to go go ahead There is a lad here that have what? Five loaves of bread and what? Two fishes. Two small, just little thing. God is not waiting for you or looking for you to give a million dollars. He wants your faithfulness and your commitment in what you are in. everybody 5,000 persons excluding women and children so men alone they were 5,000 and yet the person that has the key to give that will make the whole place become a flow with abundance was a little boy did you hear that little boy say no my mommy said I should not be giving to strangers some of us teach our children the wrong thing kids many times when you give them something just you you have a pack of biscuit and you take one out of that pack and give to them you are having the big one you give to them they eat it once mm, it's sweet you tell them can you give me a little from there they will turn it like this and open the other hand and tell you give me some more you see that's why as believers we have to grow beyond that level because that's what we do to god God has this thing stocked up. Am I communicating with somebody? He has it locked up with him. And he's testing you just with a little of breakthrough. You tested, you only perceive the aroma of the blessing. And you say, no, you're not giving back. You returned it. And you're asking him to give you more. This little boy had the blessings for everyone and he handed it over to jesus what did jesus do the bible said that jesus lifted it up and gave thanks to god when you lift up that little you have and give thanks to god i tell you the truth god multiplies it now see the benefit of you partnering with god in verse number 11 and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given things, he distributed. You see that word, distributes. Praise God. You see the word distributes? When you distribute, God gives more to you. Amen. I dare you to be a distributor in the kingdom. And I tell you, if, you're, if you are giving, and some other person is charging you to stop giving, and you stop giving, you, you don't have understanding. You give to God and somebody is telling you, no, you shouldn't be giving. Why are you giving your money to, to the church? Why are you giving your money for the sake of the gospel? And you stopped. You just disappointed heaven. Am I communicating with somebody? Some of us don't even tithe at all. You don't even want to go there. Why? Because one paper discharged pastor in the internet told you that tithing is not accepted by God. And that first fruit is not of God. And you, you are wondering why Devora is embracing you kissing you at night and in the daytime do you know what it means to tithe 
it means you're honoring God with every blessings all the way. Continue. It's not something you do and stop. Continually, you are doing it. Devora can come in the form of enemies, unending enemies. Devora can come in the form of sickness, illness. Do you know, do you know how Devora operate? Have you seen a wood that termites live inside? The wood in the outskirts is very beautiful. But inside is gone. That's because you don't have spiritual maturity. You don't even know what you're doing. The little you do, you just do it because if I don't do it, somebody will know and they will ask me, why, why don't you do it? If your tithing is because if you don't tithe, you will be asked. You have not been tithing. If you're giving, it's because if you don't give, somebody will say, but why didn't you give? That's why you are giving. Something is wrong. I come tell you somebody. This is the blessing of this young man. And when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes as much as they would. Now look at verse 12. Everybody want to go? Verse 13. <laughs> Jesus Christ. From five loaves and two little fishes, they have how many baskets? That nobody could finish the food. So who do you think now is the richest person amongst them? Come on, talk to me. Are you scared of saying it? It is the boy that gave the five loaves and two fishes that became the richest man in town. Why? He saw an opportunity, he keyed into it immediately. If you ask me, Pastor, is it that everybody, the 5,000 men, they were poor? No, they were not. I could dare you that there were people there that were fishermen and they had fishes at home. They could run back home and say, Jesus, let me go and bring some things. But you see, just as we are here today, everybody's mindset is that we are serving God. But I tell you the truth, not everybody genuinely is connected to God. Anywhere you go, there were people in that category that had money. They could provide that solution to Jesus. Jesus could do his hands like this and food will fall from heaven. But he wanted to bless somebody. Anytime you see a need in the church, it is something waiting for somebody to be blessed. Because God could, the Bible said, he, he was speaking, he said, the catches upon the 10,000, he is a man. If I need any, I will have them. Anytime you see God ask for the thing, it's an opportunity, a room for somebody to be blessed. And if you say, oh, I'm not giving, you stay where you are. Those that decide to give, they move. So life is all about choice. The choice you make today can affect you for years to come. This little boy is a typical example of what it means to partner with God. You could start from your community, start from your family. Partner with God, sort things out, speak to people, pray for them. Even as a prayer warrior, even as an intercessor, he's still partnering with God. You know what God said? God said, I seek a man that will stand in the gap. He's seeking why can't you be that man that will stand in the gap? Why can't you be that woman that will stand in the gap? Secretly, oh, I don't mean the one you'll be praying. When you see the person, you say, ah, sister, ah, sister D, you know I was praying for you last night. You don't need that. Immediately you did do that, you have defeated the purpose. No matter what you do now, it's flesh. It's carnal. 
I can't come up here and start standing and say, you, you know, you know what I battled with when it comes to do with you last night? Do you know what I prayed for you about two days ago? Do you know, do you, do you know, do you know, do you know? What, what benefit would that be? Whatever your right hand do, don't let the left to know. He said, do what you do in the secret. Let God that sees in the secret reward you in the open. Rise up to your feet. For death could not hold him captive, even in the grave. Jesus is Lord. For death could not hold him captive. Somebody say amen.